there are three stages to practice. The first in Tantra is said to be the Pashu state, where <clears throat> the desires of the mind are material. You desire to acquire something material for yourself, some better position, better concentration, better health, something that will improve you. And so people begin to practice meditation in order to improve themselves. But as they go on, that is the first stage of meditation. Slowly they move into the second stage, the stage of vira. This is bravery. Vira means brave. And the person begins to confront the inner demons, the inner uh, psychology within the mind that has caused the illusions, delusions, the sanskaras, the reactions of mind, the perceptual belief systems, these begin to be addressed. One begins to unwind these, to recognize them. And the state where you face all of your inner fears and your inner anger and your inner sorrow and all of the things that hold you back. That is the Vera stage. And at that stage, the motivation for meditation has changed from wanting to acquire something to desiring still to acquire, but to acquire personal development, insight, understanding, to work through one's shadow and difficulties in life. This is the Vira stage. And as mind grows in magnitude and the meditation develops, the individual moves out of even this stage and they come to the divya stage, the diva, the stage of divine connection, where sattva guna, the subtle realm, dominates the mind. And in this stage, the desire to acquire is understood better. And the realization has come through the deep personal work that grasping and acquiring and fear and aversion are two sides of the same coin, that neither bring you happiness, that they are the survival mechanisms of the ego to avoid anything painful or destructive to your personal self, your ego self, and to acquire the things that will develop you, improve you, bring you happiness. So meditation begins to move out of the realm of acquiring and, aver and aversion, and move into the realm of self-surrender. The, as mind grows in magnitude, the realization comes of the infinite divine presence, which is all around, through you, around you. And as realization comes of that divine presence and communion with that spirit self comes, the realization also comes that that divinity is not con controlled or confined by your sense of I amness and your sense of ego.
And that acquiring for the small self is not going to bring you that deeper realm of knowledge, wisdom, love, and understanding. That that realm is touched not by trying to acquire it, for it is larger than you. It is larger than your ego. It is a love that is deeper than your ego can hold. A knowledge that is more vast than your small mind can possibly possess. A love that is great beyond understanding. And when the ego comes in touch with that, and begins to perceive the numinous, the infinite, then the realization comes that there is something more, there is something greater than this small self. With this comes the knowledge that you are part of an infinite, integrated whole of being. And a realization, when you have that deep connectedness to that collective unconscious, to that divine nature, that the small body, mind, ego, self does not contain the vast whole but is contained within the vast whole and that the only way to know your deepest nature, to know the deepest truth is to let go, to surrender like the drop of water dropping into the ocean to dissolve into that greater wisdom, that greater love, that greater truth. It cannot be contained or held or acquired by the ego. And when the effort is there to do that, it slides through your fingers like water. It is elusive, but when instead you turn around and you want the deepest truth, the deepest love, the deepest wisdom, then the way to that is not to acquire it, but the willingness to sacrifice everything you have believed you are everything you have assumed to place it on the altar of love, to offer it as a sacrifice to the infinite and to let go, dissolve back into your natural state of being your true nature. That is the third stage of meditation. In Tantra, that is the Divya stage. So the evolution of spiritual practice goes from the Pashu stage, the acquisition for personal uh, pleasure or personal accomplishment or improvement, personal improvement, to the Vera stage of personal struggle and unfolding of the shadow and learning deep honesty and deep self-honesty and deep self-love. And then finally meeting the beloved 
of your heart. Recognizing that profound love, wisdom, truth, presence that is beyond everything. And letting go, changing from acquiring through the ego to dissolving the ego. This is the journey towards wholeness. This is the path of yoga. Yoga means to yoke, to unite. This is the path of yoga. May you find your way in this journey of the soul. All right. Namaskar.